Hello, this is Johanna Belazare doing the second case study on endometrial hyperplasia and cancer. Hi, Joanna. I enjoyed the listening to your presentation on endometrial hyperplasia and cancer. I found it interesting in one of the research studies that soy did not have a part to play in it, as soy is contributed to other reproductive cancers. I did find it interesting also how you found that the hemoglobin A1C, as it increased, they had higher incidences of higher stages of cancer. This is something to keep in mind when getting checked out by your gynecologist. It's important to tell them how often you're getting your period, and it's also important to remain, keep your weight under control, as this lady did not and had endometrial cancer. Thank you for sharing. A massively obese 5'3 and 275-pound 55-year-old sexually active woman presented to her gynecologist because of vaginal spotting for a year. Her history includes nulli gravida, which means she had no pregnancies, no children, non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, and medically controlled hypertension, both diagnosed at age 43, menarche at age 11, cord arc at age 20, two lifetime sexual partners, and six menses per year until age 51, at which she then became menopausal. A biopsy was done when she went to her gynecologist and it revealed abundant tissue, which can be seen to the right. And post biopsy, she had a hemoglobin of five and a repeated biopsy was done. And after that, a simple hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo-oophorectomy was done for this patient. In the picture located on the slide, it shows a lesion that is composed of crowded, slightly irregular shaped proliferative endometrial glands. This is characteristic of endometrial hyperplasia and carcinoma when there is a high glands to stoma ratio. Some background information on endometrial cancer. Endometrial cancer begins in the uterus and is sometimes called uterine cancer. Endometrial cancer often is detected in the early stages because it produces abnormal vaginal bleeding, as was the case for the patient after she had vaginal spotting for one year after the fact that she's been postmenopausal. If found early, the removal of the uterus, which is a hysterectomy, often cures endometrial cancer. Symptoms include vaginal bleeding after menopause, bleeding between periods, abnormal watery or blood tinge discharge from the vagina, and pelvic pain. Risk factors include obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and infertility with anal ovulatory cycles. So basically, the more years of menstruation a woman has, it causes more exposure to estrogen. It causes the endometrium to be exposed to more estrogen. Estrogen is a predisposing factor in the development of endometrial cancer. Obesity is also a risk factor because excess fat changes your body's balance of hormones. Treatment for endometrial cancer includes surgery to remove the uterus, a hysterectomy, and to remove the fallopian tubes and ovaries, a salpingo oophorectomy, which was done for this patient. Hormone therapy to increase the amount of progesterone in your body and to decrease the amount of estrogen is also a form of treatment. Endometrial cancer cells rely on estrogen for growth. So a decrease in estrogen levels may help kill off the endometrial cells, the excess of endometrial cells that depend on the estrogen for growth. Radiation and chemotherapy is also a form of treatment.
Endometrial hyperplasia usually happens postmenopause when there is no ovulation and progesterone being made. It occurs when there is an increase in estrogen causing the endometrium to grow, causing the cells that make up the lining of the endometrium to crowd together and become abnormal. Endometrial hyperplasia may lead to endometrial cancer. So that's the relation between endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial cancer. This slide shows um, the stages of endometrial cancer. Um, to the upper left, you can see that stage 1A, the endometrial cancer is confined to the endometrium. Stage 1B, it's spread to the myometrium. Stage 2, the cancer has grown into the cervix. In stage 3A, the cancer has spread into the ovaries. Stage 3B, the cancer has spread into the vagina. Stage 3C, the cancer has spread into the lymph nodes. And stage 4A, the cancer is in the bladder or the bowel. And stage 4B, the cancer is in other organs. And obviously, this is late stage where, where it has metastasized. The first research article was entitled Risk Factors for Endometrial Cancer in Black and White Women, a pooled analysis from the Epidemiology of Endometrial Cancer Consortium. The purpose of this study was to compare risk factors for endometrial cancer in black and white women. Results. Data, data was pooled for 2011 black women. 516 cases and 1,495 controls, and a 19,297 white women, in which case there were 5,693 cases and 13,604 controls. Body mass index, or BMI, uh, of 30 was associated with an approximate threefold increase in risk of endometrial cancer in both black and white women. Diabetes was associated with a 30 to 40 percent increase in risk among both groups. Increasing parity was associated with decreasing of endometrial cancer in blacks and whites. Current and former smoking was associated with decreased risk of endometrial cancer among all women. Both black and white women who use oral contraceptives for 10 years were also at reduced risk of endometrial cancer. Previous history of hypertension was not associated with endometrial cancer risk in either group. In conclusion, from this research article, the major known risk factors of endometrial cancer exert similar effects on both black and white women. Differences in the incident rates between the two populations may be due to differences in the prevalence of risk factors. So in this study, um, we can see that body mass and increased body mass index, which occurs when a person is overweight or obese, and diabetes um, increase your risk of endometrial cancer. As was the case, our patient, um, she was obese and she did have non-insulin dependent diabetes. Um, However, it shows that current and former smoking, as well as oral contraceptive use and history of hypertension, did not increase your risk. Well, at least these patients, the, the people that were uh, studied in this research article, they did not have an increased risk of endometrial cancer, which um, our patient did have hypertension, although it was controlled. Um, and as with most cancers, smoking and oral contraceptives usually um, increase your risk of cancer, but in this case, it didn't. So that was interesting to note. Um, so here, I chose this article not so much because of the races between black and white women, because it doesn't specify um, what our patient was, but because it um, discussed some of the risk factors that was discussed in this case study.
The second research article was entitled Soy Food and Isoflavone Intake and Endometrial Cancer Risk, the Japan Public Health Center-Based Perspective Study. So the study was done to evaluate the association of soy food and isoflavone intake with endometrial cancer risk in Japanese women. The results showed um, 49,121 women aged 45 to 74 years responded to a five-year follow-up. Um, and during an average of 12.1 years of follow-up, 112 newly diagnosed endometrial cancer cases were identified. Energy-adjusted intakes of soy food and isoflavone were not associated with the risk of endometrial cancer. So in this particular population of study, no correlation was found between soy food and isoflavone intake and risk of endometrial cancer. Um, Soy contains phytoestrogens called isoflavones that may mimic the activity of estrogen in your body. So there is a lot of anti-soy um, that I've heard of personally, um, more so in relation to breast cancer, because of the con preconception that soy, um, because it mimics estrogen in your body, can cause cancer. Um, but in relation to endometrial cancer, at least, research refutes that. It's showing that there is no correlation between um, the intake of soy food and isoflavone intake with endometrial cancer. And being that it was done on Japanese women, which that population is known for eating um, copious amounts of soy. So and even so, these women um, are not dying left and right of endometrial cancer. So um, this research article was informative in that sense because um, it kind of dispels some of the conceptions that we have, at least people, the Westerners, um, in regards to soy food. The last article is entitled Hemoglobin A1C and the Relationship to Stage and Grade of Endometrial Cancer. The purpose of the study is to determine if elevated markers of poor glycemic control, which includes hemoglobin A1C and fasting blood glucose levels in patients surgically staged for type 1 endometrial cancer is related to higher stage or higher grade at the time of diagnosis. Also to assess if these markers impact overall survival. Results. 82 patients fitting the inclusion criteria were identified during the study period. There was a strong positive correlation between hemoglobin A1C and fasting glucose. There was a trend towards increased mean hemoglobin A1C across increasing stages, but it was found that this was not statistically significant. Diabetes mellitus, hemoglobin A1C, and tumor grade did not affect overall survival, but advanced stage was a poor prognostic measure for overall survival. Um, in conclusion, elevated preoperative hemoglobin A1C has a trend toward a higher stage at the time of diagnosis. Advanced stage is a poor prognostic measure for overall survival. In our case study, um, our patient was a non-insulin dependent diabetic, which means she had type 2 diabetes. So um, it shows that patients with poor glycemic control um, and elevated levels of hemoglobin A1C may have um, an increased chance of being staged higher at the time of diagnosis. So um, it was shown in the previous slide with the different stages of endometrial cancer, the higher the stage, the worse off your prognosis is because the cancer more than likely would have spread to other organs. Um, so this article is very informative in correlating um, your diet, diabetes, and how it can affect or aggravate um, the development of cancer.